So these are the five levels of leadership. Okay, so these five levels of leadership were created by John Maxwell. Okay, so for those of you who don't know John Maxwell, he's a you know, what can I say about this man, dude? He he created the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. Um, this guy is a leadership guru. He knows the leadership game inside and out. Successful man. Um, if you haven't heard of him or if you haven't picked up this book. Um, I highly, highly encourage you to do so. A lot of great content. And what I love about this, this, this five levels of leadership, it really breaks down every leadership style, not style, but every leadership level there is and, and just about anything, right? Anything regarding business, regarding anything that you can think of. So for the sake of our business, we're going to go ahead and dive into this. So the five levels of leadership for the first level, who could read me that bottom level there? Anybody? I got position? you. Yeah, position. People follow because they have to. People follow because they have to, right? Right. So before I dive into level one, um, John Maxwell says that leadership is not a noun. It's a verb. It's action, right? It's action. It's something that you do, something that you take initiative in. And so if we can understand how to move up each level, then we expand our leadership influence and our effectiveness. Okay, so level one, like Chris Cooper said, is position, rights. People follow you because they have to, right? So this is the position where, you know, it's always the beginning of every leadership position. This is the first, first stage and anything that you can do regarding leadership, okay? The position doesn't make you a leader. It's where we get to shape and define our leadership. Okay, so when you guys first hit leadership, Right, you guys first get into it, you guys hit your eight sales, bam, now you guys are on level one. You're on the position stage, right? So if you get a new guy on your team, right, he follows you because he, he, he has to, right? He landed on your team, you're gonna be the guy to train him, right? So most of us here are, are some of us here are still on this level one, um, but I feel most of us on this call are roughly around level two and level three, okay? so. Level two is permission. So here, who here could read me the permission stage here? I know it's a little blurry. People. Relationships, people follow because they want to. People follow because they want to. Perfect, right? So people follow because they want to. So at level two, you've connected with your people and they like you and you like them, okay? So in level two, in the permission stage, right? Relationships with people are the foundation of leadership. Okay. So in our business, as you guys know, we're in the business of people development. We're here to develop other people. And the better you are at building relationships with the people, the longer they're going to ride with you, the longer they're going to have your back, the longer they're going to stay in the business, the longer they're going to, you know, go through all the trials and errors with you. Okay. And relationship and great listeners, John Maxwell says, great listeners, observers, right? Great listeners and observers and learners. That is the definition of the permission stage. So these are leaders that are great listeners. They're really good at listening, right? They get a task, they know how to listen, right? They're observers, they know how to observe really well at the task, okay? And ultimately, they're really, really good learners, okay? So they're conscious about what their people are and what they are doing. They know and love to serve. Okay, so at the permission stage, when you're building relationships, this is where we really start diving into team nights, right? Those team nights, this is where it comes really, really clutch because now the best way to build relationship in this business, as you guys know, is spending time with your people, spending time with your people, getting to know your people outside of the field, right? Getting to know them, having lunch with them, having breakfast with them, having dinner with them. Um, getting to know, even if you want to go as far as, you know, getting to know each other's significant other, mom, dad, whoever, it doesn't matter. At this stage, right, people are beginning to follow you because they want to, instead of just following you because they have to. Okay. And so a lot of us here, how many of us here have a new guy? Not many of us have a, somebody on our team. I know, Jonathan, you have two people on your team. Um, Henry, you have one person on your team, is it? Yeah, I only have one right now. Cool. Chris Cooper, you have nobody, right? <clears throat> nobody right now. Okay. And Cam, you have currently anybody in your team right now? 
Cam no either and no Henry. Okay, so right now in the position that you guys are in and this in this leadership role, obviously before building your team and, and getting people on your team and getting people to follow you because they want to um, and following you rather than following you because they have to, the first thing you have to do in this position is you have to, have to, have to, have to focus on your production, okay? If you have nobody on your team, then you have to be a production leader, okay? Production leader is level three. And I think this is gonna be the big one for everybody here because many of us don't have people on our team here on this call. And so at the production stage, people follow you because of what you've done for the organization, okay? So if you have nobody on your team now, but if you're a rock star salesman and you're out there closing and putting up numbers like Jonathan Alke, people are gonna follow him because of his production, right? People could be new into the business and they're like, man, I wanna work with this guy because this guy is making money, right? These are the people that we wanna call our big top producers, right? Like, like big dog, right? You wanna be a big dog? You wanna be a closer? You have to do well in the production, okay? And if you have nobody on your team right now, you shouldn't be worrying about anything else but producing. That should be your main, main focus. Okay, you have to have to produce. I can't emphasize it enough. Right now, especially in the position we're in as a company, where recruiting is not at the highest where it's been, right? And we're trying to get our numbers back up. It has to start with our leadership core. And you guys are the leadership core. You guys are the guys that got your eight sales, that got promoted, that got that $50 raise. So now you have to do what's asked of you, right? In order for you to achieve that $50 raise and maintain it, you have to produce. I can't stress it enough, okay? So you have to follow this production stage. Produce, 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 produce. Um, David, I know you've been a little quiet there. Did you wanna add anything? Uh, definitely for the production phase, um, you do have to show that you are hitting the standard. Once you hit the standard, um, you're definitely gonna get noticed by the partners, the senior partners, and even you know the president. And I feel like once you get to that stage where they know that you're putting in the hard work and effort, they're gonna reward you with the with the new people, and they're gonna give you more responsibility to train. Um, that's what I got, Andrew. Yeah, I think David hit it right on the money. Right, if your numbers are up and you're producing then they're gonna give you those new guys, right? So for those of you who are like, man, I need a new guy, I want a new guy on my team, I haven't got a new guy, um, why haven't I got a new guy? Maybe it's because your numbers aren't up and you don't deserve one, right? In this business, in order for you to get recruits, we don't wanna give them to people that are not producing, to guys that are getting one sell a week or two sales a week. What's the point? There is no point. Why? So he could go out with you for the week and you could show him two deals and he could just fall off? It, it, it's pointless it's pointless so for you to get those guys in your team you have to produce right you have to be a uh, one of those guys that's a top prospect in the company that's producing because now you have people that are noticing you you have eyes that are looking at you like david said the senior partners the partners the presidents right now people are beginning to speak about you and hey we need to get this guy a guy why because his results are what's proving that he's ready to lead Okay, at the end of the day, what I love about this business, whether you know much about leadership, whether you know a lot, like when I first started, I didn't really know much about leadership. I thought I knew a lot about leadership because I played soccer and I was a natural born leader on the field. And growing up, I was always that guy with my friends where, you know, there's always that group, there's always that guy, I don't know if you guys know, but there's always that guy in the group where it's like, hey, you know what, let's do that. Let's go do that. Let's go do this. You know what, let's go eat here, right? And I've always been that way, but in, in the business aspect, I didn't really know much. But what I did know is that if I go out there and if I produce, people are gonna follow me regardless because I'm walking that walk, right? I'm doing what I need to be doing. I'm putting up numbers, I'm making money, and that's gonna attract others and gonna be like, hey, you know what? This guy's killing it, I'm gonna rock with him. It's the same thing with G Money, right? When G Money came in, didn't really have many people on his team, didn't really know much, but he came in hitting the ground running. The same thing with Jonathan Alke. I remember it was what, the month of the month of March where you got like 24 deals or 25 deals, right? Same thing in that scenario, right? Production leaders. So in this level three phase, 
Um, John Maxwell says that people follow you because of what you've done for the organization. Okay, you lead by example on how to be effective and productive. Leadership begins to gain credibility because you are modeling things that your people want to see. Okay, and for those of you who don't have any people, what's wrong with being that model before they come in, right? You're being that model, you're producing, you're effective. So when guys do come in, they're gonna be like, damn, I have a, I have a dope leader, I have an amazing leader, right? You attract who you are, not who you want, okay? And I think this is huge because what kind of people do you want to attract? You have to ask yourself, right? Do you want to attract guys that are like-minded like you, that are killers, right? That want to go out there and that want to hunt and that want to put up a lot of deals and make a lot of money and have a lot of fun, right? Is that the kind of people that you want to attract? Or do you want to attract people that aren't motivated, that you need to micromanage, that you need to push all the time, right? So again, he says you attract who you are, not who you want. So it first starts with you. Who are you? And you need to figure that self out, right? Figure that out. What kind of person am I? Who do I want to attract, right? And once you look yourself in the mirror and you could really figure out who you are, then you'll be able to figure out what kind of individuals you're going to attract, right? And perfect example is, is, um, is G-Money. Look at G-Money. He's always, always a perfect example. Look at all the individuals that he tracks in his business, right? Calls himself G-Money. Says I'm the man, I like your money. Always posting all his crypto accounts, right? If I came new to the business and I looked at everybody, I'd be like, I wanna go with that guy. That's the guy I wanna work with. Why? Because I wanna make a lot of money, right? So who do you attract? What kind of people do you want, right? Do you wanna be people with like the G monies, right? Or do you wanna be people who are just like, hey, you know what? I don't know about this guy. Doesn't really talk much. Doesn't really say much. Doesn't seem like such a good leader. Uh, you know, like, is that the people that you want to attract? So really, really check yourself in the mirror and, and analyze and figure out who you are first before you figure out what kind of individuals that you want to attract. Because if you're not that person that you want to be, you're going to attract people that you don't want on your team. Okay. And another thing here in this, in this level three production stage is managers try to solve problems while leaders try to gain momentum, okay? And I think this is huge because momentum is growth. It's a problem solver, okay? So whenever you have momentum on your side, you are growing, you are going up, right? You're shooting for the stars. And when you gain that momentum, everything starts clicking for you, okay? So how can we gain momentum? in this business? What can we do to gain momentum for those of you in the position you are right now? And it's not a trick question. It's just a simple question. Just keep going out there, man. And, and you know, going in the field. <laughs> Hell yeah, right? It, it's not it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. You literally got to go out there and just keep hitting the field. Just keep hitting the field, hitting the field, putting up numbers, putting up numbers until eventually you're ready to, they're ready to give you a guy, right? And if you're ready, just stay ready, right? Constantly hit up Gio, constantly hit up whoever your partner is, Dad, David, Kevin, whoever it is, I need a new guy, I'm ready. You see my numbers? I'm putting up numbers. I got four a week, five a week, six a week, where's my guy? I'm doing my part, now do your part. Get me a guy, get me a guy, get me a guy because I'm ready, I wanna build, right? That momentum, that you already have by putting up all those numbers, once you get a guy on your team, it's gonna even be better. And you're gonna hit another benchmark and you're gonna keep going further and further and further along the line. Okay, so thank you, Jonathan. That, that's perfect, right? Just go out there and keep going, keep executing, keep pushing. And the reason why I'm emphasizing so much on this production stage is because I feel that, you know, we have to put emphasis because of just the position that we're currently in right now. Right, not a lot of us have people on our team, right? We can't really worry about the other levels until we get those people on our team. But what we can do in our part is just produce. Go out there and lead by example. Okay? Any questions on the level three stage? Nope, we good? Can I move on? Yes, sir. Cool. I want to hear the bad boy say something though. The bad boy's been a little quiet today and he was very, very loud yesterday. What's up, bad boy? 
How are you? What's up, Andre? Um, my bad. I was swapping out my, my girlfriend's car battery, so I was, my hands good. are a little busy. It's all good, brother. It's all good. I like seeing your voice, man. You 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 bring joy to me. You're always in a happy oh, mood. Oh man. Oh, you're gonna make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So let's move on here. Let's move on here, okay? So we're gonna go on to the level four stage, which is people development, okay? Reproduction. Okay, so who here could read this one for me here? People follow because of what you have done for them. Exactly, right? So at this point, it's a whole nother, a whole nother level to leadership, right? People follow you because what you've done for them, right? So let me ask you, Brandon, um, what has Jonathan Alke done for you? Um, so I got my first sale, like my first check, my boy fed me, he, you know, every, t every time we went to the field, like he just paid for my lunch. And you know, at the end of the day, he didn't have to do that. But he's like, my boy, I know how it feels like you're out here, like just basically vibing, you know? And like, yeah, you know, got in a, a paycheck yet. So my boy would spot me on lunch and stuff like that. So, see, see, so that's something that, you know, that's going to go a long way with you, right? You you follow him. Obviously, you follow him because, you know, he's in the position he is, right? You follow him because you want to, right? His production speaks for himself. And with you in particular, you follow him because of what he's done for you right what he's done for you reproduction stage okay and you know little things like that go a long way you know it might not be in your mind you're like man just buy this guy lunch like what what does it really mean but for these guys that are coming in they need money they're starving they're starving they need money right they need to pay their bills they need to eat right and if you do little things like that buy them a gatorade right buy them a water Right? Anything that you can think of buying them lunch, it, it really, really goes a long way. So let me dive in a little more into John Maxwell, what he says about the level four stage. So he says, people follow you because of what you've done for them, right? And it's, and it's a little deeper than that, Brandon, but it is a good example, but you know, such as, for example, if you are in the position of a partner, right? Look at David Sands position, right? Um, you know, what he's done for Abby, the support he's given her um, to really, you know, flourish and develop into. Andre, you know, Andre. Yeah, go I ahead, David. Go ahead and uh, share my experience with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah go ahead. So basically, um, when I was training Abby, um, her car broke down, right? So I was like, Abby, for us to get your car fixed, we're just gonna have to work harder and make that money. That way, we can go fix your twin turbos. She was like, yeah, let's do it. So throughout the whole month, we're working in the SGV. My focus was for her to make as much money as she can. That way she can go ahead and get her car fixed. And she definitely appreciates that help from me. And I can understand why she follows me now. I'm like, I built that relationship with her and that connection. And I showed that I actually cared for my people. Yeah, and, it, and it's huge, you know, things like that are, are, are huge. You know, I, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how many times that, I'll give you an example. My guys went to the barrier and one of them got their window cracked on their, on their, uh, on their rental. That the window shattered and they stole a backpack that was in the, in the rental. And, you know, he calls me with Ryan. It was, it was Ryan's guy, Angel, all necked out. Right, oh man, they broke into the into my, my car. They took my backpack. Like, damn, like what am I gonna do? And I'm like, what do you mean we're gonna do? We're gonna fix this, we're gonna solve it, right? I sent them the money to fix the window and I tell them go out there and make your money and not worry about it. I told them, right? So little things like that, I'm not saying go out of your way, but you know, people follow you because of what you've done for them. The things that you do, it goes to show that you care, right? So before I do jump up to the next level, um, a few other points is there are three keys in developing leaders and good people. So in this stage, you are developing other leaders, the reproduction stage, right? People development. You are now beginning to build other leaders. Obviously, this is, I think, Brandon, you're a leader, correct? Right? You're on this call, right? Jonathan built you up. He got you to leadership, right? So these are the three keys that I want you to take away here. Um, and developing leaders and good people. Number one is recruitment, 
okay? You need to know who you're looking for, okay? And that goes along with, it goes, it, it all ties into each other, right? Who are you trying to attract? Who are you looking for? What individuals do you want in your team, right? Number two, positioning, putting the right people in the right places. Successful leaders discover what other people are good at, right? What is, what is Brandon good at, Jonathan? And I'm gonna keep using you because, you know, you have him on the call, he is your leader. So what is what do you think is Brandon good at, Jonathan? Man, just, you know, I mean, you're saying in the sales wise, right? Like he, he's good at yeah. just staying in the pocket, bro, you know? And he's committed, bro. I see that he's committed, he's trying to make money. And I mean, when he's out there, he stays in the pocket. I, I You know, I'm impressed, bro. I tell him all the time, you know, cause sometimes I try to like, I'll disengage and then we'll end up like keeping, keep going with the customer and you'll end up getting something out of it. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn, like I would've probably left, but that's, you know, good stuff, bro, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. Successful leaders discover what other people are good at. And you know, one thing that you're able to establish with him is that he's good at remaining in the pocket, right? Normally you, you go to another customer, be like, hey man, I'm good, but he hangs in the pocket. And you know, this is super, super key, right? It's, it's important because you need to know what your people are good at. You need to understand your people, okay? And then number number three here is equip. Understand your people's strength. Once fully equipped, you would have multiplied yourself. So overall in this business, we're here to multiply ourselves. We're here to develop leaders, right? We're here to grow our team, right? But before you need, before you do so, you have to start with the production. You have to start with the position, the permission, the production, right? Super, super important. If you're not producing, you're not gonna give yourself the opportunity to reproduce, okay? Again, if you're not producing, you're not gonna give yourself the opportunity to reproduce, okay? And in this business, the quickest way you get to leadership is by having multiple leaders. That way you start multiplying by two, by three, by four, by five. And all of a sudden you see your team grow and grow and grow and grow. And that's how you're gonna get to partnership. You're not gonna get to partnership. You're not gonna get to team lead on your own. It doesn't happen like that, right? You need a team. And it's super, super important that you're able to identify who you're trying to attract in your team. You're able to identify who are the top producers in your team. And you're able to identify that you're a top producer. Right, and if you're able to identify these things, your team is gonna grow exponentially, right before your eyes, okay? So the last one I have here is the pinnacle stage, okay? Level five, who could read this one for me? I know it's blurry. If you can't read it, I could read it. I might ask Chris Cooper. Chris Cooper, can you see that? Yes, sir, we got pinnacle for respect. People follow because of you are and what you represent so this is the highest 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 level of leadership okay and to be honest with you you know only a few people i feel really really reach this this leadership right most of the partners yeah are, are probably here are there some proper partners that are probably here not here i i believe so yeah right but at this stage you know, this is this is the ultimate stage that John Maxwell says. He says it's out of respect, right? People follow you because of who you are and what you represent. Great amount of respect in this position. Leadership is always an ongoing and learning process, right? So in this position, in the respect position, everything here ties into it, right? People follow you because of what you do, what you've done for them, the numbers, organization right and ultimately they have the most upright respect who do you guys feel is a perfect example of this level five stage andy the fun it's the fun right ken Hello. right we we follow them because of the respect right we they know what they're talking about they've been in the game long enough they're able to prove to you that they could go out there and produce if they have to Right, all the things that they've done for you, all the knowledge that they have, you guys have the most upright respect for them. Same with my team, with my team, man. All, all my guys, my, my team in Chicago, Danny, out here in LA, Kevin, these guys have the most upright respect for me. And, you know, at the end of the day, your people are human beings, man. And if you show that you care for them and you value them, 
more than just the business and you really care about them and you really want to see them grow and succeed, you are going to get the most upright respect in this business, right? But in order for you to earn respect, you must do what? Give it. You must give it, right? You have to give it, right? For you to be at that position, you have to give respect to others. And there's no other way or no other better way than being a servant leader and, you know, giving the most upright respect to your team, right? Just because they might be a rep or they might be a leader or they might be a team leader and you're a partner, right? Obviously, a lot of us are here partners, but you have to give everybody the right amount of respect. And for all of you that are leaders, whenever you guys get a sales rep on your team, right, you shouldn't belittle him. You shouldn't talk down on him. You shouldn't act like you're better than him. Right? You've just been in the game longer. Who knows if he's more talented than you? You never know. So you have to give him that respect. Respect goes a long, long, long way in, in this business. So these are the five levels of leadership. 